It takes the patience to understand that you're gonna mess up. It takes a lot of trial and error to figure out what things work and what things don't, knowing that you're going to fail. I, I destroyed many pairs of shoes to get where I'm at. It takes thick skin. It takes hearing people say that your work is garbage. Some people look at it as just a source of income, but I look at it as an escape. My name is Dan Gamash. I'm a custom sneaker designer. And it's, it's a cool feeling to know you have this one dude who spent 16 hours paying this pair of shoes that you know damn well no one else was gonna have. The starting point really was to convey my own take on the Mango Fusion bottle and the artwork, really get the essence of it. It's inspired by the bottle or inspired by the theme. Little things like that that I take a lot of pride in. Art was always my getaway even when I was a little kid. There was three places you could find me. It was either the cafeteria, the gym, or the art room. Growing up, you know, my dad passed away. I lived in a trailer with my mom and didn't have the best clothes or whatever, but I always saw sneakers as that one thing that I could still kind of feel like I fit in. You first get a pair of shoes, the joke is, you know, when you smell the shoes, it's like getting into a new car, you know, it's a great feeling, especially as a kid who didn't have any money. It's like the one thing that made me feel good. I wear those shoes into the ground because I cherish them. First custom pair of shoes I ever did. I went into my mom's basement and I had a beat up pair of Air Maxes and some paint that I bought at the art store. I painted a pair of Air Max 90s into a whole bunch of different shades of purple. My mindset back then was I want to do something cool and I'm going to go walk into the barber shop and, and show up. They're like, oh shoot, you got to make us some. So I made like a pair for like the barbers to wear and people would see that and that's how it started really organically. What up, buddy? Good to see you. How are you? Good. Yeah. I'll be real, when we met and we talked in eight years ago, I never thought customs would be this big. I was like, yeah, I collect sneakers, it's my hobby. I know sneakers would sell. I didn't think customs would go this crazy, and I mean, they've went crazy. Yeah. Now you're expressing yourself. Now you can put your logos on stuff that doesn't have logos. Players that used to have black or white sneakers on court, right. nowadays you see the person, whatever uniform they're wearing, you're doing a custom sneaker to match their uniform. Sneakers, fashion, and basketball, they're all interwoven now. If you're terrible at playing ball, but you're the best dressed dude, okay, well. You might still have a good day. I think a lot of people that only know my story from two or three years ago feel like I just kind of roll out of bed and I became a name in the sneaker industry, and that's not how it was. I took my hits, not being able to pay the rent, on all the things that I did to you know, get where I am. And those things really make me appreciate more what I got now, because I could lose at any time. I'll average anywhere between four and 12 pairs a week. I have a six month wait. You know, not because I work that slow, it's just I have that many projects booked in advance. When I take on a project, I force myself to stay as creative as possible because you know that's what got me here. You know, I don't want to just slap the Bacardi bottle on the side of a shoe because that looks like a billboard. That's not what I want. You know, you want to have a shoe that's more the soul of it. I want to like something that someone is really proud to have on. I always am proud of what I do. Like, like a proud, proud parent looking at him, like, oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs>